This is the makeup lecture for CS5229. In this lecture, I will introduce you to Tickle, a scripting language, OTICL, an object oriented extension to Tickle, and NS2, a popular network simulator based on OTICL and C. You will be using NS2 for your next assignment. The lecture will be posted online as a series of short videos. In this first video, I will introduce Tickle. Tickle. Tickle is a scripting language, just like Ruby, Python, Perl, which you might be familiar with. <clears throat> a program written in Tickle is a script consists of a series of commands. The commands are separated by semicolon and new line. So, in this example, we see three different commands. Each command consists of a series of words separated by white space. The first word is always the name of the command. This tells Tickle how to evaluate the command. The remaining words are arguments to the command which will be passed into the procedure that executes the command for processing. <coughs> a script can be stored in a file which can then be passed to the ticker interpreter, interpreter for interpretation. So if you have a script called say test.tickle to execute the script you just pass the file name to the tickle interpreter interpreter called tickle shell. Now tickle like many other scripting language also provides an interactive shell. In the interactive shell we can type in commands which Tickle will evaluate and the result of the evaluation is then printed on the screen. So let's take a look at some examples. So the simplest uh, Tickle command is called set. So set basically takes in two arguments. The first is a variable name and the second is the value which we want to assign to the variable. So if I say set a1, the first word set is the name of the command, a and 1 are the arguments, and this argument will be passed to set, set which will interpret it as I uh, set the value of the variable a to 1. Another useful uh, command is expression or EXPR. This allows us to compute simple mathematical functions like addition, subtraction, multiplication, etc. So if I say expression of 1 plus 2, this will just return me the value of 3. Another simple and useful command is put S or put string. What this command does is it expects a string as an argument which it will then print onto the screen. So if I say put as hello, it will just print hello and if I say put as a 1, it will just print 1 onto the screen. Note that here even though 1 is a number, it is treated as a string in ticket. In fact, in Tickle, everything is a string. Now, the command is interpreted in two steps. Okay. First, it performs some substitutions on the words in the command, in a command. 
after substitution, the arguments will then be passed to the procedure named by the name of the command for evaluation. There are two common types of substitution done in Tickle. The first type is called variable substitution. If we have a variable A, then dollar $A will be substituted with the value of variable A. Let's look at an example. Suppose I have the following command, expression $A plus 1. So in the first step, ticker will substitute $A with the value of A. So remember, previously we set uh, A to 1. So $A will be replaced by 1. And then ticker will just uh, evaluate expression of 1 plus 1, which gives us the value of 2. The second type of common substitution is command substitution. To do a command substitution, we enclose a command in a square bracket. When Tickle encounters square brackets, he will execute the command within the square bracket and substitute the whole thing with the result after evaluating or executing the command. Now note that just like before, A will be the name of the command, BCD will be the argument of the command and you will pass the procedure that to execute the command and the result, the return result will replace this whole thing here. For example, suppose Tickle encounter the command set C square bracket expression dollar A plus 1 close to square bracket. Tickle will first replace dollar A with 1. This is a variable substitution just like before and then it will then execute the command expression of 1 plus 1 and which evaluates to 2. So this whole command will be substituted with 2 and the command set C of this whole thing will become set C of 2. So my variable C will have the value 2 after the command is executed. Now, when Tico encounter a double quote at the beginning of a word, Tico will treat everything until the next double quote as a single word. In other words, the white space or in fact the semicolon, the new line, etc. within the double quotes will be treated as ordinary characters rather than special characters that they denominate words or commands. Substitution is done on the characters between the quotes. So, for example, if I have a command set C double quote dollar A dollar C Tico will first perform substitution on dollar A and dollar C we will get the following set C quote 1 and 2 and therefore my variable C will now have the value of 1 space 2 If the first character of a word is an open curly bracket, then Tickle will treat everything until the next closing curly bracket as one word. But unlike double quotes, Tickle will not
perform any substitution within uh, the curly bracket. So if we have the following command set c curly bracket dollar a dollar c quote curly bracket uh, this whole thing will be treated as a single word without substitution and will be set as the value of variable c so in short if you see curly bracket no substitution if you see double quote things inside the double quotes are being substituted okay let's see how this works in practice let's suppose i say set x to y so the value of x is the string or the character what now if I say set dollar x zero what do you think will happen Dicker will first substitute dollar x with y and therefore this command is the same as saying set y to zero so let's see if what happened if I now print out the value of y it will say zero just as okay let's look at another example let's say I set a to one and set b to eight now if I say set c to expression of a plus b what will the value of c be right so just like before dollar a will be replaced by one dollar b will be replaced by eight these become expression of one plus eight which evaluates to nine and so this expression is equivalent to set c of nine so my value the value of my variable c will be Let's see what happened if I say expression of dollar a dollar b and I put this in a double quotes. So since this is in quotes, Tickle will just treat these as ordinary words rather than name of the command. So dollar a will be replaced by one dollar b will be substituted by eight and this whole string expression space one space plus space eight will be assigned as value of c let's see what happened if we assign c to curly bracket of expression dollar a plus dollar b now, since we put this in curly bracket, tickle will not perform any substitution. And therefore, the value of C will be assigned to exactly this string, EXPR space dollar A space plus space dollar B without any substitution. So you can put F of C and this is what we get as expected. Now, to using uh, curly bracket and quotes carefully is needed, especially if we are passing in arguments to commands that control the execution of the code. So, suppose I have a command, oh well, Tico has a command called wow. And, and suppose I have a code that says wow b is bigger than 1 uh, set b to expression of b minus 1 put s of b now let's see what 
this command while is supposed to do. While takes in two arguments. The first is the condition, right? and the second is what to execute if the condition is true, or while the condition is true. So we will keep executing this as long as the condition holds, right? just like what we normally do with while loops in other languages. So if I execute this, I will see 7654321 just as expected. Now using a curly bracket here is important because tickle wants the command while to interpret the condition. If instead I use quote, double quote, in my code here then what will happen is that tickle will first evaluate this which becomes since b is 8 this will become while well, 8 larger than 1 and since 8 is always larger than 1 this code will be executed continuously so what we get is we will get an infinite loop. So let's see if this is true. Oh, I forgot I have set B to 1. So let me reset back B to 8. And let me show this again. Yep, we get into an infinite loop. So this concludes the first part of this video series on Tickle, Otickle and MS2. So I have introduced to you some basic syntax for Tickle, uh, how Tickle scripts are interpreted, uh, two common types of substitution, variable substitution and command substitution, and the use of double quotes and curly brackets.